So I'm going to come back to this lathe a little bit. Um, I haven't talked much about it since I originally got it. I have done some work with it. Uh, recently, uh, over the, I guess it was in July, um, my variable frequency drive got hit by lightning and more or less just ruined it. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I can get it apart. I'll, I'll show you in maybe the next video. So uh, anyway, um, I haven't really used it that much. Although last couple weekends ago, I had a friend come up and we did a couple projects with it with some aluminum uh, for some parts um, for some not not tractor or anything channel related. That's why I didn't do a video of it. But I got to thinking about it. Historically, I've had the four jaw chuck on there. And what I decided to do is recently I got this three jaw with it. It was kind of rusty, still is rusty. And so I decided I was going to put it on the machine, just figure that out. Um, so this is a Clossing 5914 uh, lathe. Did I say mill earlier in the video? I may have. Anyway, it's a 5914 lathe. And um, I've, had this, I've had this thing for oh, about a year and a half now, approximately. And uh, we've done some work to it. I had a, a variable frequency drive. Uh, and then when that burned out, I actually ordered a new one, which that new variable frequency drive was bad. So what I ended up doing so we could work with it is I actually hooked up uh, the MEP804A, the military tactical quiet generator that I purchased um, this summer. I uh, hooked that up to it and ran, ran it for almost nine hours, ran the generator for almost nine hours uh, to run this lathe. So uh, that was pretty nice to have. Um, we weren't limited... Uh, because we had a bad variable frequency drive. But now that I've talked for almost two minutes on what we're going to do in this video, now that I've hooked this uh, this chuck up to this, what I want to do is I actually want to, um, I mostly, mostly hooked it up to see if there were any issues, and it's about six thousandths um, out, if you can see that on the camera. So it's about six thousandths out, um, but what I want to do is I want to clean it up uh, before I really start messing with it. You know, just clean it up, take it, take it apart, inspect it, and everything. And uh, if for those of you that follow Keith Rutker on vintage vintagemachinery.org, he's got a YouTube channel. Uh, if you don't follow him, I would encourage you to do so. A couple years, uh, he ended up with a LeBlanc lathe that he rebuilt several of the trucks on. So I'm going to do the same thing to these, um, kind of modeling what he did. Uh, both him and ABOM79 uh, have been tremendous assets to me in terms of getting into some of this. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this chuck off here and um, we'll start taking it apart. All right, so first order of business is that I've obviously got to take my brass rod out of there. And hopefully this is the beginning of me actually getting all this cleaned up. Now that I feel comfortable in using a lathe, um, knowing what tools and everything I want to use, I can start getting to the point where I can organize some of this stuff. Like I've realized, okay, I know, if you could hear me, I know what... Um, what needs to go where, so on and so forth, what I'm going to use the most, um, so on, and, and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this thing in back gear. Oops, I've got okay, now I'm going to put it in back gear, so that way it doesn't go anywhere. And then, leave this way. Put it on the other night. Oh, there we go. All right, so this lathe right here is a L00 style um, chuck mount. And what that means is it's kind of it's kind of an old design. It's not all that common. From what I can tell, don't take don't take my word for any of this. So basically, we're just gonna 
and do it here. And there we go, we got our truck off. So now I'm gonna um, go over to the workbench and get this set up and uh, we'll start taking it apart. All right, let's see if we can get started here. First thing I'm gonna do is back out the jaws. So they are numbered one, two, and three. At least I can see three here. North idea who made this yet. I'm sure we will figure that out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to soak all this uh, in evapo rust. I've got some evapo rust coming, and so I'm going to soak it in evapo rust. So one should come out. Yep, one, two, and three. I suppose first we should take the jaws off. That's something we should do before we get too far into it. Since they are reversible, looks like. Um, so actually I'm going to put these back in here. And um, I'm going to spin them in just a little bit. And then... Uh, And then go ahead and take these jaws off. That's what I need to do first. Not very often that I get it right on the first try. Hmm. Try this. That works. Okay, so notes, let's see here. One long, one short bolt. Number 28, 28, this one has no number on it. So number three, I'm wondering how, now that these are apart, I'm wondering how I identify them. Because the two is up here. Three. And then this is one. So <clears throat> let me take them back out. Okay, so is there any way to identify this as number one? Certainly not seeing any way to do that. Oh, number one. Okay, so number one is uh, stamped in the keyway here. So I can keep those. Number two is stamped in the keyway. And three is stamped in the keyway. Okay, <clears throat> so there's that part. Now I learned from uh, Keith Rutgers video that you have to somehow remove this face plate from the rest of the machine surfaces. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can do that. So I'm guessing that goes all the way through because these are longer bolts. So now let's flip it over. Now with the video that Keith Rutger did, he somehow or another, there were some pushways on this. I don't see how, 
I don't see a way to push this back. Basically what I'm trying to do, make sure you can see this on camera, is I need to separate this back plate from this plate right here, but I don't see any good ways to do that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread, nope, I won't go that way. Actually it might. Um, just gonna clear those up a little bit. Just gonna clean up the threads and I'm gonna see if I can get the bolt to go in there. Oh yeah. I'm gonna see if I can't push it out from the back somehow. I don't know if that'll work. It would make sense that these threads, yep, it's gonna bottom out. So never mind, that doesn't work. We're back into our original quandary. But I'm going to go ahead and clean up these, all these threads. This is something quick and easy I can do now. So I haven't shown a whole lot of of machine work or um, any type of metal work mostly because I, I kind of do it at random times I'm not very good at it at period um, but I'm learning and there's lots of really good channels out there that have everything that someone would need to uh, learn all right so back to this um i have no earthly idea how to get this off That's just all gear driven right there. I don't see anything on the inside that would help me. Well, I'm going to study this thing for a few minutes, try a couple things, and we'll come back and I'll let you know if I figure something out. All right, well, <clears throat> just used a brass punch and basically stuck it through here. And I uh, got, it, I guess it caught the lip. I've already tested. I wasn't sure if it would actually work or not, but I literally tapped it like twice and it popped right out. And all the, the screws seem to, or bolts seem to go still, still go in. So that's good. Um, definitely shows you why you should probably clean your chuck every now and then. Uh, keep in mind, I have never used this chuck and, uh, you see, uh, how much crap is in there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush this off and set it to the side. I don't think there's, I don't think there's anything else we can do with this part. Set that towards the back. Then I think I'm going to go ahead and brush this off. Sorry, my hand's in the way. Like that. Set this off to the side and go dump this in a bucket.
All right, now we can continue on our merry way. So I think what we need to do next, we need to take those Allen head bolts out. Need to buy a lottery ticket. Okay, it did move. So I guess this is just a cover plate. It holds the gears and the, I don't know what you call this, the main screw, I don't know. So next I need a Phillips screwdriver. take these set screws out not a Phillips this is a flathead I don't know why I said Phillips definitely a flat screwdriver so we're gonna take these set screws out so that's what holds these gears in take all three of them out first Make sure you can see all this. Yep. Now, one thing I want to point out is I might screw up because I have never done this before. I have never taken apart a chuck, never even seen the inner workings of a chuck other than on video. So, your guess is as good as mine if I'm doing this right or not. And who knows? I could be completely screwing something up. I don't think I am, but you never know if you are. Now, theoretically, our gears will come out, I thought. Yep. So there are gears. One. Hmm. That one really don't want to come out. Didn't hurt it. It's fine. And then the last one. Might be able to get that one out by hand. Yep. Just like that. All right. Now, let's see here. Is there that much wear on these? Certainly doesn't look like there's a lot of wear on it. Which, that's a good thing, I guess. So there's that. So the last thing we have to get out is the main gear, which I think we can just take. There you go. Just like that. Now we have a disassembled chuck. It's really cool that they where somebody was able to figure out all that and the fact that it's machined. I, I find that just amazing. Um, but looking at this gear here, doesn't seem to be like that much wear on this gear either. Certainly not. I mean, there's, it's definitely noticeable, but it's not that worn. So there we go. That chuck is completely disassembled. So now I have to wait on my evapo rust. I'll, I'll get all these parts cleaned up over the next couple days. Um, I'll get them dropped in some evapo rust, and uh, then we'll clean them up. And then after we clean them up, we'll put it back together and see how bad I screwed up. So um, I think that's it for this video. Uh, if you if you like seeing lathe stuff, let me know. Um, I don't like I said I don't show a lot of it, but if you enjoy watching it. Uh, feel free to comment. Um, I know it's not normal for my channel, cha channel, but it is something that I have an interest in. So thanks for watching.